now we got this this fence all power wash now you can actually see the difference uh, after it's been power washed over here this side of the fence is not power washed and this side of the fence is power washed and it actually using that turbo nozzle makes your fence almost look brand new again so now we're done power washing and we're going to start the staining process and to start that staining process you're going to want a good quality stain brush and then i got my airless sprayer set up with the stain you're going to want mask off any place on the house where the fence is going to be meeting the house so you don't get any over spray on the house and then we're going to begin staining the fence and staining the fence i'm going to be staining it by myself so what you're going to be doing is staining a section of fence about a three foot section then you're going to back brush it with a good quality stain brush that's you want a good thick stain brush wide that can cover a lot of surface at a lot of time because usually typically there's a lot of fence to actually cover don't mind the annoying dog but um but then um <laughs> stupid dog um, so I'm going to get ready to start spraying this thing and I'm going to be spraying three foot section and then back brushing it. If you try to do too much, the stain's going to dry too fast and you won't be able to back brush it in and push it into the pores of the fence. Back brushing it is a key element to staining their fence to make it last a lot longer. So you're going to spray it to get it on. Spraying it helps you do a lot more fence at once versus just brushing it because you can cover a lot more surface by spraying it and getting it on. And then you back brush it, put it in. That helps the quality of your stain job and making it last a lot longer. So here we go. This is the process. So I've taken a, a hand masker and you can see I've masked off the house right here so I don't get any overspray on the house. If you don't have a lot of experience masking, you want to mask off a lot farther so you don't get any overspray. The last thing you want to do, especially on a house we just painted, you don't want to get any overspray on it. So don't get a lot of practice, do a lot of masking. Now I'm going to begin the staining this fence. I'm going to show you that process. So I got my four inch stain brush, got my gun here, airless spray gun, sprayer is actually set up around the corner using a 515 tip. If you want to purchase any of these items, typically these stain brushes and these tips and a lot of the accessories I use can be found on my Amazon store on my website. My website is theidahopainter.com so go look at my my website and check out some of these accessories. Typically you can buy them less than you can buy them at a paint store or do it yourself box store. So here I'm going to show you we're going to begin staining some more of this fence. So I've sprayed my stain on really heavy, now I'm going to go back and back brush it. And when I'm staining, I want to go from wherever the power the pickets run, whether they run horizontal or vertical, you want to go with the pickets and you also want to back brush with the pickets. And when you're spraying, don't start and stop in the middle. Um, this fence is a vertical fence. I'm going all the way up, all the way down, and when I'm back brushing, I'm going to be back brushing all the way up and all the way down too. So you can see how I'm spraying it on, just doing a section about this much, and then and going back and back brushing it right away because the stain actually absorbs into the fence really fa fast because the fence is dry wood. So you gotta get enough stain on there. So I'm loading enough stain on there that I can see it's pretty heavy and pretty soaking wet with stain. Then I'm back brushing it, then I'll move on to the next section. When I get near this house, I want to be careful with my overspray where I'm shooting it and don't want to shoot up way high like this because I don't want it to shoot up on the soffit. So I'm going to be really careful on this section. The pressure is pretty important too. I'm not going to be running my sprayer at full pressure because um, it's going to send out a lot more overspray at full pressure. So I'm going to turn my pressure way down when I'm doing a fence and typically around 1800 to 2000 PSI.
Typically when I'm doing a fence too, I like to have a 20 inch gun extension on my gun, but um, my guys took off to another job site and left me without a gun extension, so I'm not using a gun extension. A gun extension is going to keep you from having to bend over as much and having to reach so high. It's just going to make you work a lot less, and it's just a nice convenience when you're painting every day for years and years. It uh, takes its toll on your body, so using a gun extension is going to help you out a lot. I got this fence all saturated with stain. Now it's gonna dry, it looks like a brand new fence. You can see the, the comparison. Here's my fence. I used a solid color stain on the, this fence. Here's the uh, new section stained, and there's an old section. You can see the big difference. Nice brand new fence. So here's a close up look of our fence now, and you can see the quality of the fence after it's been power washed and stained it looks excellent the wood looks nice and new fresh and clean and here's what a close-up look of the old fence actually look like and it's old grade beat up ugly looking so that's the difference of 